Mr. Speaker, a recent USDA report on foods typically purchased by SNAP house households has sparked conversation in the press and on Capitol Hill about ways to promote healthy eating among those who rely on SNAP benefits. Quite frankly, I'm troubled by the way the report has been characterized and by some of the responses. Flashy headlines and convenient sound bites, selectively highlighting findings that tell only half the story are damaging to what should be our shared goal of ensuring that our most vulnerable neighbors have the support they need for their families. In fact, one of the key findings from the report is that the spending habits by SNAP households and non-SNAP households are very similar. And I think it's safe to say that all of us can be making healthier choices when it comes to the food that we eat. But if we want to talk about promoting healthy eating among those who rely on SNAP, we need to start by enhancing and making further investments in nutrition education programs, increasing access to healthy foods in underserved communities, and expanding pilots that have proven effective in increasing fruit and vegetable consumption. Most importantly, Mr. Speaker, we need to increase SNAP benefits so low-income families have the ability to purchase healthier foods. Now, last Congress, the House Agriculture Committee completed a thorough re review of SNAP, 17 hearings. As ranking member of the Nutrition Subcommittee, I participated in each of these hearings, and we heard time and time and time again that the current SNAP benefit, which averages $1.40 per person per meal, is inadequate. It's hard to buy a cup of coffee these days for $1.40. This meager benefit is often too low for families to stave off hunger during the month and certainly does not provide enough support to allow families to maintain healthy diets on a consistent basis. Without additional benefits, we know that people are making very difficult choices. They have to choose between food or medicine, between food uh, for their families or stable housing. Research from the Center on Budget and Policy Priorities has found that increasing SNAP benefits by a mere $30 per month would lower food insecurity, decrease fast food consumption, and increase vegetable consumption. Similarly, USDA's Healthy Incentives Pilot uh, uh, provided SNAP recipients in Hamden County, Massachusetts, with additional benefits if they pur purchased targeted fruits and vegetables, and it was highly successful. The result was an increase in healthy food consumption. Participants in this pilot consumed 26 percent more targeted fruits and vegetables per day and spent more of their SNAP benefits on these items uh, than did non-participants. So we know that low-income families who rely on SNAP have to make difficult choices in trying to stretch their meal budgets and often select cheaper foods that contain refined grains and added sugars and fats. The research from the Center on Budget and the results of projects such as the one in Massachusetts confirm what we know to be true providing additional resources for food to families living in poverty will enable them to make healthier choices for themselves and their families. We should not be demonizing the poor by policing their shopping carts, Mr. Speaker. It's far too easy and has become far too commonplace for those of us with steady incomes and paychecks that provide us with access to the healthiest food to second-guess the choices of these families struggling to make ends meet. Um, it's um, insulting and it is mean-spirited and um, more than a little hypocritical to suggest that we meal plan for those living in poverty while we continue feeding our families the same foods that some of us, some of us, some of us suggest we should limit in our anti-hunger programs. Eating more nutritious foods should be a goal for all of us, Mr. Speaker. It will lead to better health, reduced medical costs, more engaged kids who are, who are, 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 who are able to learn better, and also more productive adults. But if we're going to promote healthier eating and work to end hunger now, we must start by increasing the current SNAP benefits. And I would say to all any of my colleagues uh, who doubt this, you try living on a SNAP budget. You try living on $1.40 uh, per person per meal. Um, you, would, you will find it not only difficult to put food on the table, but especially challenge, challenging to make nutritious and healthy choices. As we consider the next Farm Bill, let us enhance the SNAP benefit. It is the right thing to do. With that, I yield back my time. The gentleman yields back. The chair recognizes.